STS-81 was a January 1997 Space Shuttle Atlantis mission to the Mir Space Station. Topic: Crew. Topic: Mission highlights. STS-81 was the fifth of nine planned missions to Mir and the second one involving an exchange of U.S. astronauts. Astronaut John Blaha, who had been on Mir since September 19, 1996, was replaced by astronaut Jerry Lininger. Lininger spent more than four months on Mir. He returned to Earth on Space Shuttle mission STS-84. Atlantis carried the SPACEHAB double module providing additional MIDIC locker space for secondary experiments. During the five days of docked operations with Mir, the crews transferred water and supplies from one spacecraft to the other. A spacewalk by Lininger and one of his Russian cosmonaut crewmates occurred after the departure of Atlantis. The STS-81 mission included several experiments in the fields of advanced technology, earth sciences, fundamental biology, human life sciences, microgravity, and space sciences. It was hoped that data would supply insight for the planning and development of the International Space Station, earth-based sciences of human and biological processes, and the advancement of commercial technology. On January 18, while Atlantis was docked to Mir, Grunsfeld placed a telephone call to the NPR show Car Talk, hosted by two of Grunsfeld's fellow MIT alumni, Tom and Ray Maliotzi. STS-81 involved the transfer of 2,710 kilograms pounds) of logistics to and from the Mir, the largest transfer of items to date. During the docked phase, 635 kilograms (1,400 pounds) of water, 516.1 kilograms (1,138 pounds) of U.S. science equipment, 1,000.7 kilograms (2,206 pounds) of Russian logistics, along with 121.7 kilograms (268 pounds) of miscellaneous material, was transferred to Mir. Return to Earth aboard Atlantis was 570.0 kg of U.S. science material, 404.5 kg of Russian logistics and 97.3 kg of miscellaneous material. First shuttle flight of 1997 highlighted by return of U.S. astronaut John Blaha to Earth after 118-day stay aboard Russian space station Mir and the largest transfer to date of logistics between the two spacecraft. Atlantis also returned carrying the first plants to complete a life cycle in space—a crop of wheat grown from seed to seed. This fifth of nine planned dockings continued Phase 1B of the NASA – Russian Space Agency cooperative effort, with Lininger becoming the third U.S. astronaut in succession to live on Mir. Same payload configuration flown on previous docking flight — featuring SPACEHAB double module — flown again. Blaha joined Mir-22 crew of Commander Valery Korzun and flight engineer Alexander Kaleri on 19 September 1996, when he arrived there with the crew of STS-79. Lininger worked with the Mir-22 crew until the arrival in February of the Mir-23 crew of Commander Vasily Siblev, flight engineer Alexander Lazatkin and German researcher Reinhold Ewald. Ewald returned to Earth with the Mir-22 cosmonauts after a brief stay on the station. Astronaut Michael Fole replaced Lininger on Mir when the STS-84 mission arrived in May 1997. Docking occurred at 22.55 Eastern Standard Time, 14 January, followed by hatch opening at 0.57 January 15. 
Lininger officially traded places at 4.45 with Blaha who spent 118 days on the station and 128 days total on orbit. During five days of mated operations, crews transferred nearly 6,000 pounds of logistics to Mir, including around 725 kilograms pounds of water, around 516 kilograms pounds of U.S. science equipment, and 1,001 kilograms pounds of Russian logistical equipment. About 1,100 kg 2, of materials returned with Atlantis from Mir. Crew also tested on shuttle the Treadmill Vibration Isolation and Stabilization System designed for use in the Russian service module of the International Space Station. Another activity related to International Space Station involved firing the orbiter's small vernier jet thrusters during mated operations to gather engineering data. Undocking occurred at 9:15 Eastern Standard Time, the 19th of January, followed by fly around of Mir. No significant in-flight anomalies were experienced with Atlantis. Topic: Wake up calls. NASA began a tradition of playing music to astronauts during the Gemini program, which was first used to wake up a flight crew during Apollo 15. Each track is specially chosen, often by their families, and usually has a special meaning to an individual member of the crew or is applicable to their daily activities. Topic. See also List of human spaceflights List of space shuttle missions Outline of space science <laughs>